Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the super pave design procedure step by step. Um, before we uh, jump into the example, I wanna uh, walk you through uh, each uh, key steps. Um, so super pave design stands for superior performing asphalt pavements uh, and is uh, uh, described in ASHTO R35. Uh, this standard practice for mixed design evaluation uses aggregates and uh, mixture properties to produce a hot mix asphalt job mix formula. Uh, this design is based on the volumetric properties of the asphalt mixture in terms of the uh, air voids, uh, voids in the mineral aggregate, which is uh, VMA, and the void field with asphalt, uh, which is uh, VFA. Um, so in order to uh, select the desirable uh, asphalt content based of the given criteria, the criteria given by ASHTO R35, we have to uh, calculate all these uh, volumetric properties. Uh, the design procedure. So first we have to select aggregate. Uh, like I said in class, we have to uh, make sure that aggregates are well graded. Right, so uh, in the class we uh, perform, we select a whole uh, a blend of aggregates to um, to make sure that uh, in uh, point forty five uh, uh, the power chart. Right, so this is the uh, the straight line is the criteria. And you want to make sure that your curve stays very close to the densest. So the straight line uh, stands for the densest configuration. So you want to make sure that uh, your actual particle size curve is very close to the densest uh, uh, straight line. And also, meanwhile, make sure uh, your uh, uh, your uh, gradation curve stay within the uh, the critical limit, the limit uh, criteria. Uh, and selection of binder. Uh, selection of binder uh, means that uh, super pay method requires mixing asphalt and aggregate at the temperature at which the viscosity of the asphalt binder is uh, 0.17 plus or minus 0 0.02 Pascal second and compact at 0 0.280 plus or minus uh, 0 0.02 Pascal per second. So based uh, based of the uh, the uh, the asphalt binder uh, provider should give you uh, the specification. Uh, very commonly, uh, we mix it uh, the binder at uh, 300, uh, 300 or 310 degree Fahrenheit and compact it around uh, 200 or 260, 200 to 260 degree Fahrenheit. Okay, um, and then determine the design aggregate structure. Uh, so uh, there is a Two method to produce uh, to produce uh, asphalt specimen. One is called uh, uh, superpave uh, gyratory compactor, uh, and the other compaction method is called the Marshall hammer compactor. Uh, so in the lab, we use the Marshall hammer uh, compacted. Uh, 75 times assuming it is uh, it, it will be it will have heavy traffic for the light traffic is uh, 50 times each side uh, and the other alternative method is super pave gyratory 
compaction method. Okay, uh, and uh, this design will be based on the uh, gyratory compaction method. Uh, and this video shows uh, shows us uh, what procedure uh, it is. Okay. Welcome to the CTTP training. Gyratory compaction test basically uh, is like this. Uh, and the com uh, the specimens are compacted using the super paper gyratory compactor with a gyration angle. Uh, so this is your specimen. This is your specimen. And when you place it into the chamber of the uh, apparatus, it actually uh, uh, has an angle, the specimen was placed so that it has an angle uh, about 1.16 degrees uh, and a constant pressure of 600 kilopascal is applied uh, and, uh, and uh, is, uh, is compacting uh, in the sharing mode Okay, so it's rotating, so 
say is uh, rotating back and forth and rotating back and forth um, and Uh, and the force uh, and the force is applied and the mode the mode is uh, gyrated so it's cre it's creating a shearing action in the mixture okay so this is uh, how it's applied um, and uh, how many so this table table 910 tells us the uh, number of gyrations we need to deliver to the asphalt mixture specimen. Uh, it depends on the, uh, the specific design traffic levels. Okay, uh, so as shown in the table, the Super 8 method recognizes the three critical stages of compaction. Uh, one is called initial. Initial, so N, I, N, I, uh, stands for initial the number uh, the initial compaction level okay so. initial compaction level uh, and n DES and DES uh, stands for the design compaction level. So uh, design compaction and a max. Uh, so the initial A and I uh, initial. Uh, was implemented to identify the tender mix. Okay, uh, tender mixes. So a tender mix lacks the lacks the stability during construction and hence will displace on the roller rather than densify. So it's a, a very it identifies a tender mix. Uh, meanwhile. N, uh, N design, N das, N das. Uh, the design compaction level corresponds to the compaction that is anticipated at the completion of construction process. So it's uh, corresponds to the compaction. Uh, at the completion of construction. So it's compacted uh, at the end of the compaction. Uh, and M max M max corresponds to the ultimate density level. Uh, that will occur after the payment have been used to have been subjected to traffic for a number of years. So that's the uh, ultimate density level. So that uh, represents ultimate density level. And this density level usually occurs uh, after the pavement has been used for years. Okay, so it has been uh, subjected to traffic for years. Okay, so that's why. Uh, you will see that the larger traffic level is the uh, the larger number of uh, gyration compaction is required. Uh, traffic level 
10 to the power of 6 ESAL. Uh, so uh, ESAL stands for uh, equivalent single exo load of uh, 18,000 pump. Okay, so single uh, single exo single uh, equivalent single exo load of 18,000 pounds. So that's the reference. So 10, 10 to the 6 power of 6 means 10 uh, means a million, a million of equivalent single exo load. Um, so you can see the larger the traffic volume is, the larger number of uh, gyration compaction is required. Uh, and which one should we choose? Well, it depends on the application conditions. So if this road is going to be uh, subjected to very light traffic volumes, then uh, and then I will select this. So the initial initial uh, number of gyration compaction uh, is only required six, so like compacted six times. Uh, so it produce a, a specimen uh, with which gonna uh, be uh, delivered six times, uh, six strokes six rounds of gyrations compaction. Uh, for the design, it's, uh, it's going to deliver uh, 50, 50 rounds of gyration compaction and the maximum 75. Uh, similar for the other traffic level conditions. Okay, uh, and once the uh, specimens is produced and you're going to uh, measure uh, and then measure uh, and estimate uh, the uh, all this uh, volumetric parameters like the air voice uh, and the dust to effective asphalt ratio, tensile strength ratio, uh, and based off its nominal maximum size, uh, and the check if. Uh, if the percent theoretical specific gravity is within uh, is within the criteria, is within the range specified, uh, the specified range, okay. So we'll use we'll come back to this table uh, in a little bit. Okay, let's look at the example. Um, so first it says the, the traffic, uh, the design traffic is 12.5 million ESO. So that means uh, is 12.5 uh, times 10 to the power of six uh, E, ESAL. Uh, and the super pave, super pave design. So uh, a, a 19 millimeter, 19 millimeter is your nominal maximum size, uh, nominal aggregate size. Nineteen millimeter. Uh, so the 19 millimeter is uh, about uh, it's about uh, three quarter inch, okay. three quarter inch super pave design aggregate, um, and uh, select a, a super pave design aggregate structure structure based on the following data and determine the recommended asphalt content according to super pave mix design for an equivalent single exo load of 
20 million. Okay. Okay. Um, so if we go back to the steps, right? So we have to select uh, aggregate to make sure it's well graded. Uh, and assuming we have done, we have done all this, and we have three blends to select, and we're gonna mix it, mix the binder with the uh, with the height or with the specific temperature and compact it uh, at a uh, also at a specific temperature, uh, and uh, determine the design aggregate structure based off the gyratory compactor text. Okay, so uh, assuming that three blends, three blends are created, uh, and all the data, uh, all the data is collected. So for each blend, we measure, uh, we measure GMB, which is the bulk specific gravity of the mixture, bulk specific gravity of the mixture. Uh, here I uh, want to talk about the volumetric code names. Okay, so the uh, the big letter is the uh, property. So it can be specific gravity, mass, weight, volume, percent. Uh, and uh, first uh, subscript st stands for the material. So if it is B means binder, S means stone. Or aggregates. A means air. M means mix. Uh, and the second uh, subscript subscript uh, stands for modifier. So sometimes A A means uh, apparent stone uh, or absorbed or binder. Uh, or B stand stands for bulk. E stands for effective. M means maximum. Okay. So giving that information. Uh, Go back to the annotation G. M. So M stands for uh, mixed, right? Mixed. Uh, let's go back. Okay. So the first, uh, the first subscript means material. The second one means modified. So uh, the first one stands for mixed. Uh, and the B stands for uh, modifier, so stands for uh, bulk, right? Stands for bulk. So uh, GMB is the bulk specific gravity. Uh, of the mixture. Uh, and GMM, so M also stands for the material, right? So it's mixed. Uh, and the other M uh, means uh, the modifier, means maximum, maximum. So GMM is the maximum specific gravity. Theoretical uh, maximum specific gravity of uh, of the mixture. Okay, the first one stands for mixture, the second one stands for max maximum. Uh, so that happens, the theoretical maximum, that happens uh, when you squeeze all the air bubbles out. So it's a specific gravity when you squeeze all the air voids when you eliminate all the uh, all vacuum them out vacuum all the air uh, voids out okay and the gb b stands for binder so it's the uh, specific gravity of the asphalt binder uh, 
uh, and PB is the percentage, the, is the percent, the percent of binder by weight. Uh, and PS is the percent uh, of stone or aggregates. And PD is the percent of dust. D stands for dust. So the dust is the uh, the one passing through number two hundred sieve, okay. and the GSB is the uh, B stands for bulk, S uh, stands for stone. So it's the bulk specific gravity uh, of stone. Uh, and A H initial H initial is the uh, the height of specimen after the uh, is the height of specimen after the initial uh, gyro gyratory compaction. At, uh, at the initial number of gyrations, so at n initial initial number of gyration compactions gyrations. Okay. Uh, and the design is at. Uh, Is the number, is the design number of gyrations. Also, the height of the specimen. So that is that means uh, so for this problem. Uh, is uh, twelve point is twelve point five million twelve point five million ESA uh, ESAL traffic. So that's uh, and the maximum size is nineteen. So which is this one? Oh, uh, let me go back. Go back. Go back to. So the traffic level is here. It's uh, from three. Is within. It's between three. 3 to 30 million ESAL. Uh, so it says the number of gyration, initial number, uh, initial number of gyration should be 8. So that means you compact it 8 times. Compact the specimen for 8 times and take it out and measure the thickness. And you get, uh, then you get your uh, age uh, initial. Uh, and the design means you uh, compact, uh, deliver a hundred times, a hundred round of gyration compaction uh, in the machine. And then after that, uh, and you measure the thickness of the specimen and you got H depth. Okay. That's what it means. Okay, uh, and uh, and the initial, uh, and it's in millimeter. So uh, in the problem, it's actually in millimeter. Okay, millimeter. So they all millimeter. They all in millimeter. Okay, so. Uh, this is what the me what the meaning of each parameter. Uh, so they they create say uh, three three blends are created, and uh, let's see based off the criteria. 
uh, let's see which one uh, is preferred. Okay, which one is preferred? Uh, and to justify which one is preferred, we have to uh, we have to look at the criteria table, which is table, which is this table. Okay, so for each blend, we have to. Uh, calculate the uh, GMM and VFA, uh, VFA and uh, the percent maximum theoretical gravity, uh, and also calculate percent void filled with asphalt, which is V, uh, which is uh, VFA. Okay, and sit and see which blend is preferred. Now, uh, I would create a spreadsheet to help me uh, calculate it. Uh, so the result for blend two and three are already uh, listed. And here I'm just gonna use uh, blend one as an example, showing you how uh, to obtain those parameters, obtain the value of those parameters, okay? Uh, so first of all, let's see uh, blend number one, GSE, okay? So GSE is the effective specific gravity uh, for the stone. Uh, and the equation, so here is the uh, equation. Okay, so in the in the class handout, uh, we have that we have the uh, aggregate specific uh, gravity. So E uh, S E. So the first one E S stone. E means effective. So effective gravity of the stone. Uh, and effective gravity, effective gravity of the stone uh, is uh, related to maximum theoretical maximum stress gravity. Okay. Uh, and uh, the effect GSE is the effective specific gravity. So is uh, is the uh, effective specific gravity of the aggregate coded coded with asphalt. So which is uh, so which is the uh, specific gravity of the aggregate plus the absorbed asphalt binder. Okay, so it's a specific specific gravity of the aggregate plus the absorbed asphalt binder. Uh, and the theoretical maximum specific gravity of asphalt uh, assumes that all the air voids is removed. All the air voids are removed, so only asphalt binder uh, and uh, absorbed asphalt binder and aggregate uh, is remained. So that's why uh, the the specific gravity is uh, only contain uh, only contains uh, contains the binder, the binder and the uh, aggregate with absorbed asphalt binder. Okay, all right. So let's go back to the example. 
Oh, okay, uh, one more, one more. Okay, so let's uh, write it down here. Okay, so GSE is the uh, specific gravity or effective uh, specific gravity uh, of aggregates. Uh, coded with uh, asphalt binder. In another word, uh, it is it is the specific gravity of the aggregate that absorbed, absorbed asphalt. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, this is the equation uh, for us to calculate GSE. So, given uh, percent of stone uh, and GMM. Uh, and the percent of binder and its specific gravity, we should be able to calculate GSE. Okay. So from the given data table, uh, we already, we know PS, right? We know PS for uh, the first one. So we already measure. So PS uh, is the weight. Uh, it's the weight of stone, the percent weight, percent weight of stone, uh, which is, can be measured. So those are all the parameters uh, that are able to measure in the lab. So we are able to measure all these. So those are all given. Uh, and then let's plug in those numbers. So equals uh, PS. Okay, uh, PS equals nine ninety four point one, uh, and divided by a hundred over GMM, uh, two point five nine A, uh, minus uh, PB is five point nine from the table and divided by one point zero two five. Uh, so the specific gravity of asphalt binder should be provided by the manufacturer. And we obtain the uh, GSE for blend 1 equals 2.875. Okay? And similarly, we plug all the other numbers into those equations and we can obtain uh, VTM, VMM, VFA. Uh, for the for each blender. Okay. Uh, and I encourage you to plot to pause this video uh, and calculate those per the value of the parameters by yourself and then come back. Uh, now it comes to percent of uh, GMM at uh, N initial. Uh, so actually, the percent uh, so is equal to percent GMM at N design times H design H initial ratio. Okay, uh, and uh, and percent percent uh, GMM at N design equals <coughs> uh, is actually equals a hundred minus VTM. 
100 minus e, uh, e VTM, uh, which we already obtained up here, up here is 5.4. So it's equals to 100 minus 5.4 times H, that's H and uh, H initial ratio, uh, which is 115 divided by 125. Uh, and we got 87. Zero percent. Okay. Uh, and uh, PBA. P is the percent, right? Uh, and B stands for binder. Uh, PBA stands for binder, and A stands for absorbed. So it's percent uh, of uh, absorbed binder. Percent of absorbed binder. So it's equal to the effective. It's equal to the uh, effective uh, gravity minus GSB. Okay. So it's equals a uh, hundred times 2.875 minus 2.692 over uh, 2.875 times 2.692 uh, and the times 1.025 we got 2.42 In another word, PA is equal uh, equals the weight weight of absorbed binder divided by the weight of aggregate. Okay, so go back to the phase diagram. Um, so PBA equals to the absorbed by the weight of absorbed binder. Divided by uh, divided by the weight of aggregates or the weight of stone. Okay. Uh, and then B uh, P B E uh, and P B uh, E is the effective. Is the effective uh, binder. Okay, so is uh, let's see. So is the uh, effective. Uh, it stands for the effective as what content. So it's equal to PB minus PA times PS. So effective as what content uh, is the total export content is the total export content minus the percent uh, lost to absorption so PBE is actually the effective the weight of effective as binder which is which is the weight of asphalt binder not absorbed by aggregate and divided by the weight of aggregate. So in fact, is the uh, uh, is the effective weight of binder. Okay, let's go back. Let's see how we the note. Yeah, so WBE, so is uh, WBE divided by uh, aggregate, W aggregate or W stone. Okay, and, and this also can be written in terms of PB, PA and PS. But the fundamental concept is this. So it's the percent of effective asphalt binder. 
uh, and equals uh, 5.9 minus 2.42 over 100 times 94.1. We've got 3.62. Uh, and that's the binder ratio. That's the binder ratio uh, is the uh, the percent of aggregate passing number 200 divided by the effective asphalt content. So it's actually equal to the weight uh, of uh, aggregates that's passing through number 200 sieve and divided by uh, divided by the effective asphalt content which is uh, WBE or uh, PD PBE ratio so it's equal to 4.5 over 3.62 and we got 1.2 Okay. All right, and then uh, after that, uh, note that this uh, this analysis is based of an assumption uh, based of assumption that let's see uh, VTM uh, VTM yeah so VTM is uh, uh, is it is not equal to four percent okay so we have to and then we're gonna com uh, compare the result with the uh, selection criteria okay so the selection criteria is uh, on the table yeah yeah it's the table nine one one but note that this criteria is based off the design air voids of 4%. Uh, of 4%. Okay. Uh, and the air voids in the actual blend is not equal to 4%. Okay. So our uh, our voids, our VTM, uh, the voids, air void, percent, percent uh, air void, uh, or a VTM, does not equal to five, uh, does not equal to four percent. Uh, so it, right now we cannot direct compare the result with the criteria, so we have to adjust it. Okay, so we have to adjust it. Um, so the adjust is based of its uh, uh, based of its estimated binder. Uh, so we have to uh, adjust it. Uh, we have to uh, adjust it to uh, to the four percent air voids uh, as shown in the equation. So PBT is is origin original percent weight of the asphalt uh, of the asphalt binder. So the original is uh, five point six. Uh, minus 0.4 uh, times 4 minus uh, the original uh, VTM, uh, which is 5.4. And we got uh, 6.5. And also adjust the v, uh, VMA. Uh, the original VMA is 14.1. Uh, 
uh, if you look at the table we uh, we just uh, uh, work at and c c is the the factor um is the is the correction factor uh, so let's go back let, let's see the equation 9.16 uh, attached on the following pages Uh, which is right here, okay? Uh, so C, C is equal to negative 0.1 for uh, original VTM less than 4%, 0.2 for VTM greater or equal to 4%. So in our case, it's greater than 4%. So we take uh, 0.2. Uh, and, okay, so C is 0.2 in this case. And times four minus five point four, uh, and you will get thirteen point eight. Uh, and it's a lot easier to get the estimated VFA. Uh, so it's a hundred times the the corrected VMA, thirteen point eight minus uh, minus four, and divided by thirteen point eight, and we got seven. The 1.0. Uh, and uh, uh, corrected the uh, percent GM at uh, initial number of uh, gyration. So it's just equal to its original, which is 87, uh, minus 4, uh, minus VTM total, which is 5.4. Uh, so it's changed to 88.4 uh, and the uh, uh, effective binder effective binder content uh, so it's an original effective binder content minus uh, the uh, the whole bunch of things followed uh, so it's uh, just plug all these numbers in uh, and GB Uh, and in the end, the corrected uh, dust to binder ratio uh, equals PD, which is the original one, 4.5, and the uh, corrected PBE, which is obtained 4.2. So we got 1.1. Uh, 1.1. Uh, and then uh, we are able to compare the adjusted. Uh, adjusted the parameters to the criteria. Uh, so go back to the criteria. It says uh, which criteria? Let's go back to uh, the table nine nine point eleven, which is right here. Uh, so R uh, we have to compare uh, R is nineteen. So R uh, N M S nominal maximum size is nineteen. So the minimum, uh, v minimum VMA should be 13, and the dust to effective uh, asphalt uh, ratio 19 uh, to 112, and uh, and the corresponding uh, east LSL we are uh, in between, uh, we are in between 10 to 30. So we are gonna look at the VFA in between should be in between. 69 to 12. So our uh, design uh, is 100. So we meet some. Uh, we meet the uh, minimum. Uh, and okay. So let's go back to the result. So the uh, first of all, the VFA must be uh, VMA must be greater than 13. 
uh, must be greater than 30. It seems like a blend three doesn't meet, and the one and two are, are meet. Uh, and uh, criteria uh, for VFA, VFA should be in between 65 to uh, 75. It means uh, we can uh, cross out blend three and one and two. One and two both uh, both meet, uh, and the dust to binder ratio, dust to bind binder ratio, uh, bind the one and two all meet, uh, and it seems like uh, one and two both meet, but it seems like binder uh, binder two is uh, uh, is preferred. Uh, because it has higher, uh, Blender 2 has higher VMA, higher VMA and VFA, um, so it's preferred. So therefore, um, Blend 2 uh, blend uh, is selected. Because uh, it has a higher VMA value, okay? Higher VM VMA. Okay. Um. Okay. So that's uh, how we select the aggregate structure. So next, uh, uh, next step would be <coughs> determine the binder content. Determine the binder content. So we have to usually we. Uh, need at least the four, uh, four trials. So uh, try the different, uh, four different asphalt content uh, at an interval of 0.5 percent. So here <coughs> we want to try uh, different binder content: 5.4 percent, 5.9 percent, 6.4 percent, 6.59 percent. Uh, and we are able to measure uh, and make the mix, then measure GMB, GMM, uh, and height at uh, initial number of initial gyrations and height at the number of design gyrations uh, and the specific gravity of the binder, box versus gravity of the stone, uh, and the percent aggregate passing number two, 200 dust. 200 serves, which is the dust. Uh, given these uh, measured values, we should be able to uh, we should be able to determine the VTM, VMA, VFA percent uh, percent of GMM at number of uh, design gyrations and the percent GMM at number of initial gyrations and GSE, uh, PBA, PBE, and dB ratio. So once they determine all this, uh, we can plot the relationship between uh, these parameters and asphalt content. Uh, so those are all. Uh, those can all be done uh, at uh, in uh, with a spreadsheet. So uh, using all these uh, equations, you should be able to get all the calculations. Uh, and here, I, I just give you an example how I determine how I determine uh, those parameter values for uh, for uh, asphalt content of five point four percent. Okay, 
So to, in order to determine uh, VTM, um, VTM equals, you still have to go back to the equation sheets, right? The equation sheets, uh, let's get back to the equation sheets real quick. Uh, and so VTM equals one minus GMB GMM ratio. Okay, so it's equal to uh, GMM GMB ratio. So which is one minus a uh, hundred times one minus uh, GMB divided by GMM. So it's equal to uh so for the first one is equal to uh a hundred times one minus two point three five one over two point five seven Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll write over here. So VTM uh, here equals uh, 100 uh, 1 minus 2.351 uh, 2 2 divided 2.57, okay? And by doing that, you should be able to get uh, 8.5, 8.5, okay? Uh, and the VMA equation, the VMA equation from the equation sheet uh, attached behind the VMA is 100 minus GMBPS divided by GSB, okay? So it's equals to a uh, hundred, so a uh, hundred uh, minus minus uh, GMB uh, two point three five one uh, in times uh, ninety four so PB uh, PS so ninety four. Point six uh, to GSB ratio two point six eighty eight, and you got uh, fifty point six. Okay. Uh, oops. VMA. Oh, no, not 50.6, is uh, equals uh, 17.3, okay? So uh, similarly, uh, use the same equation, you can obtain the values for, uh, for the mix 2, 3, and 4. Uh, and the VFA is pretty straightforward. The VFA is equal to... Uh, VMA, VFA minus VTM, and uh, divided by VMA. So it's equal to 100 uh, times 17.3 minus 8.5, and divided by 17.3 equals uh, 550.6. Okay, uh, and, and the same thing. So apply the equation. 
uh, and the percent gyration percent uh, percent uh, GMM at uh, n uh, at n design uh, is equal to the ratio of uh, GMB and GMM, right? If you uh, look at the equation sheets attached behind. Okay, so is uh, yeah, so that's uh, at the design and at the design, uh, the design is equal to uh, is equal to uh, one hundred minus VTM. Okay, so GM design percent design is equal to one hundred uh, VTM. Or, uh, and it's, uh, you will see, it, or is equal to uh, GMM GMB ratio. Uh, it's the same. You will get the same answer. So it's also equal to one minus one minus uh, hundred minus eight point five, a hundred minus four point six. So it's the same thing. Uh, and apply the same equation. Uh, Percent gyration uh, is equal to the percent uh, design times uh, H design H initial ratio. Okay, so it's equal to yeah the six this number times the the uh, height ratio uh, and the GSE. Uh, PPA, so it's follow the same thing. Okay. And after that, and you're gonna plot uh, all these relationships. So plot uh, VTM PB. Okay, plot the VTM uh, VB relationship, and plot VMA. PB relationship. I get the four, the five plots, and look at the criteria. Uh, look at the criteria. What, what is the criteria? So let's look at the the binder, uh, the binder, the binder design criteria. Okay, so uh, so the super design method the target four percent air four uh, percent air voids. Okay, so that's the criteria. So uh, let's find uh, VTM. What let's find the binder at four percent VTM four percent. So at four percent VTM or the air voids, uh, the corresponding binder content is six percent. Okay, so and then uh, and then let's look at the other design values at six percent the binder content. So uh, find the other design parameters at six percent. So for a VMA. Uh, you actually get about uh, so VMA is uh, uh, 
uh, is 14.5%, uh, right? Uh, and then uh, BFA, so BFA, you actually read about, um, say, 71%. Uh, uh, and then, uh, and the percent GMM at uh, N initial uh, is 86.5%. Uh, 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 and the, thus the binder ratio at 6% uh, is about, yeah, let's say it's 1.01%. Okay, so let's go check the criteria. Uh, let's go check the criteria at table uh, 9.1. Okay, so R at at 4%, our dust to uh, effect ratio is 1.05%, uh, so we are good. Uh, and tensile ratio, we haven't checked it there, uh, yet. Uh, and the VMA, VMA we got is 14.5%, uh, uh, 45% compared to the minimum required 13%, so we're also good. Uh, and the GMM and VFA requirement, uh, right here, Uh, in this category, R, uh, RVFA, RVFA is 71%, uh, so we are also good, right? And the DB, dust the two, yeah, dust the two binder ratio is also, uh, is also good. So it seems like uh, this design at 6% binder, we meet all the criteria. Um, so I would say in the end, uh, once you perform uh, perform all this analysis, I would say uh, it's all good. Okay, so our design is good. Uh, in the end, uh, I will select uh, uh, six percent binder content. All right, all right. I hope this video is helpful. All right, thank you. Have a nice day.